The Duplicator WordPress plugin is very useful when transferring a website from a local environment to the live host. However, when following this process, you may encounter some difficulties if the website is large. Now, I'm going to go through a process of showing you exactly what the issues are and the challenges I came across and exactly how to deal with it when transferring from a local environment to a host using the Duplicator plugin. So let's click on Duplicator on the left hand side. Now, I've already installed the plugin and gone through that process, which is obviously fairly straightforward, usual routine with WordPress plugins. I'm not going to go over the exact details of how to use the duplicator plugin, but essentially when you get to this page, you need to create a package which is inclusive of an installer PHP file and also a zip file of the files of your WordPress site. So let's do that. Let's click on create new. The first thing you need to do is to create a name for your package. In this example, we're going to keep it simple and call it website and then click on next. The duplicator plugin will proceed to scan the website and assess the size of the site and other particular details. Here are the details of the scan and you'll notice particular information in relation to the site such as web server, PHP settings and so on. Typically you'll have a good and a tick next to these elements but in this example, you can see there is a warning next to the total size of the site. Now, currently the site is 246 megabytes, which is fairly sizable. If you click on total size, you'll see the size itself, file count and directory count. Now, when I tried to transfer a local site to the hosts using this size of site, it was a challenge. In short, the host wouldn't let me transfer such a large amount of data all at once and it was a bit of an issue using the duplicator plugin. So I thought to myself, what's the best approach and workaround for this and continue to use the duplicator plugin. And in fairness, it was straightforward and it was to remove the images from the WP content folder, essentially cut them out of that folder, put them on the desktop for the time being and then recomplete this process of scanning the website to assess the size of the site and then repackage everything before proceeding to transfer to the live site. So let's take a look at exactly what I'd need to do and redo this process. Firstly, you need to locate your WordPress files, which in this example are located in my documents. I've got two local websites here, one called basewebsite.dev and one called localtest.dev. The website in question is base websites. So we're going to open up those files and then we're going to go to WP content and then we're going to uploads. And in this example, we've got 2014 and 15, but primarily the vast majority of the image files are in 2015. So I'm going to open up that file and then I'm going to highlight 01, 03 and 04. And I'm going to cut those files and I've got a folder already prepared on my desktop called local images and I'm going to paste those into that folder. Okay. So now you'll notice that there are no image files within the 2015 folder. So we can go backwards and obviously back to the main folder where the documents are located. So once you've removed the images, we can go back to the duplicator plugin and follow the process again. Back inside WordPress admin, you need to click on duplicator on the left hand side and you'll be presented with the following screen for duplicator packages. Once more, you need to click on create new. In the following screen, you need to add a name for the package. In this example, we're going to choose website, no images. So you know what the package is going to be associated with and there won't be any images in the zip file. Once you've done that, click on next. The duplicator plugin will proceed to scan the site in exactly the same way as it did previously. This time the results are much more positive with a tick and good next to all of the areas that have been checked by the plugin. Most importantly, there is a tick and good next to total size. The website is now 108.47 megabytes. In short, you should be able to transfer this website from the local host environment to your live host using the duplicator plugin. Essentially, you'll be splitting the process into two. Follow the standard duplicator plugin process 
and you can watch plenty of other YouTube videos on how to do that. And then once you've uploaded all of the files to your live server, you can then follow a process of uploading the images to the appropriate WP content folder. So let's take a look at exactly what you need to do once you've followed the duplicator plugin process. Now we have FileZilla open, which is an FTP program that enables you to transfer documents, folders and images, etc. from your local computer or elsewhere to your live host. Now once the duplicator plugin process has completed, all of the information from the local environment will have transferred to the live host and will be located inside the public HTML folder. So let's double click the public HTML and see what's inside. Obviously, all the WordPress files. And if you scroll down, you'll notice the folder called WP Content. And inside there is where we need to upload the images that we took out from the local environment, if you remember previously in the video. So let's double click WP Content and go straight to the folder that we need. So it's WP Content and then Uploads. And then if you remember previously in the video, the images are all those for 2015. So images which we've uploaded to the local environment in 2015. So let's double click on that. And already in this particular website, I've already added the images. So for 01, 03 and 04. So essentially January, March and April. That's what they're associated with. But if you're starting from scratch and you haven't got these images here, 04, 03 and 01, you'll need to upload the images from the desktop. So on the left hand side, you'll need to find the desktop in your computer, double click on desktop and then scroll down to where you'll see local images or whatever you save the folder name as on your desktop. Double click on that and there you will notice 01, 03 and 04. So the process here, if you didn't have 04, 03 and 01 on the right hand side here is you'd need to upload all of those images to your server. So simply select all three. And then you need to right mouse button and click on upload. It may take some time depending on how many images that you have in those folders and the sort of size, but approximately a few minutes and you'll find that all those folders will be in position on the live server. Obviously, once that's happened, you can go to your website and check that everything is working effectively, all the links and all the images work, but I didn't have any problems when I followed this process and it worked very smoothly. Once you followed the duplicator plugin process and you subsequently uploaded all of the images to your live server, most things should be working correctly in the site and the process is fairly good using the duplicator plugin. However, depending on the other plugins that you've got installed on your WordPress site, you may encounter some difficulties where some links haven't changed. So you'll find on your live site that some of the images or some of the items in other plugins link to your local website. Obviously, that's no good. So you need to follow some further processes to change the links within your live site. The one piece of software that I like to use in combination with following the duplicator plugin process is this item here called interconnect forward slash IT. Now here's the URL where you can download it from. I'll add it at the bottom of this video. Now essentially you need to download this piece of script upload it to your public HTML folder and then follow some specific instructions to change content on your live site so that the information that was previously on the local site is now changed to the right information for the live site. I'm going to do a video on exactly how to use this script and make sure that you follow the instructions of changing information correctly. When you use this script you've got to be careful because you're going to be changing a lot of information in your live site and it could break things so you do need to be careful how you use this script but it is essential because the duplicator plugin won't change certain pieces of information 
um, when you make the transfer from local to live there's going to be some things you're going to have to change otherwise your live site is going to link to the wrong places so check out that video and i hope this whole video was of use to everyone thanks